everyone who meets me who doesn't know me has a projection of what I am and it's, who it's I'm not even their be. fault no and listen I, we were all probably guilty of that a wee bit like yeah. with, with people we I, meet, listen, we have I an did idea. the same thing with Hervé when I met of him course, of course I projected onto him the and ha-ha it's something joke. we can all work on trying to not do but I think for me from the other side of it I guess is that like you're fucked the moment you live up to the projection that's when you're fucked but can I say what's really interesting is this whole film is about being judged one of the themes is is how we all prejudge and rush to judgement you know in a way what I love about Peter and Jamie in the film is the audience will bring their preconceptions about whatever they think and you're talking about two right. people who have for large parts of their life probably been judged on their looks but you know it's superficial that's Jamie Dornan and Sasha Gervasi this week on the Ritual Podcast. The Rich Roll Podcast. Hey everybody, what's happening? How's it going? How are you doing? What is the latest? Very grateful to spend an hour or so with you here today. My name is Rich Roll. This is my podcast and I am your dutiful cruise director on the Lido deck on this journey of self-betterment and self-actualization that we are all blazing here together. Welcome. But the focus of today's conversation is Sasha's new movie. It's called My Dinner with Hervé. It premieres on HBO on October 20th. And it's a look at the wild, crazy life of French actor Hervé Villachez, who, if you're my age, you will recall famously played a character called Tattoo in the number one hit 1970s TV series, Fantasy Island. The film is based upon this crazy, insane night that Sasha had with Hervé, who was played in the movie by Game of Thrones' Peter Dinklage, uh, that transpired about a week before Hervé's suicide. And it's about this unlikely friendship that develops between these two guys that that permanently changes both of their lives. Uh, It's a movie that Sasha began writing over 20 years ago when he was still a young buck in film school. It's the first script he ever wrote. Uh, Jamie is, of course, most recognized for his portrayal as Christian Grey in the Fifty Shades movies. But listen, if that's all you know about this guy, I got to tell you, there is way more to this man. He is an amazing talent and just somebody with a lot more depth than you may imagine. Uh, So I first read a version of the Hervé script back in maybe 2005, and uh, I knew immediately it was super special. As much autobiographical for Sasha, who was a bit of a mess when he was sent to interview Hervé, as it is universal. The movie and uh, and this conversation is about how a chance encounter between two people in various states of desperation develop this unlikely friendship that 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 really forever alters both of their lives for better and for worse. But more than that, it's about not giving up on a dream. It's about how we prejudge people based on their outsides. It's about the delusion of fame and this need to be seen. And ultimately, it's about what happens when we look outside ourselves for validation to to solve the pain of life. So with that, I give you Jamie Dornan and Sasha Gervasi. I took some silent food with me. You just can just keep keep munch on. away. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we should be fucking recording. I'm just going to lick this until it's finished. <laughs> Wait, why don't you start with that? Okay, are we ready? Push fucking record, It's dude. fucking recording. I'm Jesus, silently just... going to lick the pickle until <laughs> it's done with. I just want to lick this until it's finished. Podcast lick the Jamie over. fucking door. We're lick done. The okay. I think we did is it. Is that it? We did it? Isn't yeah. it lick the pickle quite a satisfying thing to say? <laughs> Your fucking pickle. From Ireland. I might start my yeah. own podcast called Lick the Pickle. You've got something in your teeth. I do. Oh, yeah. sure. Can I we thought sweat? you were going to tell him when he has shit on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of set the, the tone for right. being polite, so I, I went for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite touched. You're a priority of You are a priority. Good top media outlet. I'm excited we're to lucky. talk to you guys. I, and I just watched a movie like half an hour ago. And? And I was quite moved. I was moved by the movie itself, 
you know and and so it was just not its time and we had so many you know frustrating times and people who nearly wanted to make it and then didn't and then we had offers that were just useless and i think i said this earlier i was talking with jamie about it but i I cannot tell you how many times people said dude this is the most seriously uncommercial concept in the world it's a suicidal dwarf film set in multiple time periods <laughs> set in multiple time periods it's incredibly yeah. expensive it is literally you could not come up with anything more completely uncommercial and people said just give it up and i was like i just couldn't do it right. well you 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 mentioned uh the character danny tate which Jamie plays, uh, which is more than semi-autobiographical. I mean, it's not you per se, but it's certainly your story and your experience with this character. Like, where do you, you know, first of all, Jamie, like, how did you approach playing this version of Sasha? And where does reality in your experience depart from the fictionalized version that, that Jamie portrays? I mean, I think, you know the the word to take from that is like a version of you know like i i I kind of i think we agree quite early on that there'd be a separation between the reality of what happened and what sasha uh experienced with hervey and what we portrayed on screen now listen obviously there's a lot of stuff that's very similar and some stuff that's exact but um the first time i read the script it was scripted as as danny tate although I'd been filled in by my agent about the real story, and that it was really Sasha who was the, who was the journalist uh, all those years ago. And um, but I sort of, in a way, although at times it was difficult, but in a way, I always felt that I was doing my own thing, and it was I. You, need, you I were sort trying of to mimic to feel, Sasha's well, behavior. Yeah, well, well, geez, good luck. <laughs> good luck on <laughs> who that. Who wants one. to see that? Anyway? Good luck I don't have the that. energy to do it's that. Quite frankly. <laughs> Uh, very bad idea. <laughs> no, I mean, it would also, you know, it, it, it would be, uh, it would have been a very different experience had I been uh, being directed by uh, the man I'm trying to portray and trying to capture his yeah. characteristics and his voice and his. I just think it would have taken away from something that was more sort of grounded in, in what we wanted it to be and feeling like it was within myself and I speak for Pete as well in a way because in a way he didn't want to mimic mm-hmm. Herve. he wanted to get the voice pretty close but it still wanted to be his own version of and in terms of how he, uh, he looked and where we went with you know uh, you know there, I think at one time down years before I was involved um, you played around with prosthetics and yeah, stuff to, yeah, to make absolutely. him look more like Herve and actually it ended up becoming a bit it wasn't it wasn't like just you know, it was fake you know yeah. Yeah. And at a certain point just like Jamie's absolutely right you know Peter is playing his version of Herve and Danny Tate yes the basic core facts you know young journalist final you know final week alive with Herve interviews Herve and then has is left with his story I mean those mm-hmm. things are true but you know in order for the film to work, Danny Tate had to become a fully fleshed out, a fully a character that was fully alive, and and Jamie had to take ownership of that character. I mean, as much as you're playing a version of me, I think it's fair to say, you know, you've had, I'm sure, things in your life. We don't want to get into too much detail, but there are moments where we've all been through things that mm-hmm. you know Danny goes through, and so he was bringing as much of himself mm-hmm. to it as possible. And I think that you know, it was wonderful. For, for there to be no pressure on either of us because I wasn't looking for him to do anything specific other than to be hopefully emotionally authentic and to and to really dive into the role. Yeah. And he did. And I think whatever Peter captured, it was close to the spirit. And similarly with Jamie, you know, he caught something authentic that I think is not just a really about me or even about him, but it's about a character who's on the edge, mm-hmm. who's literally, as much as Hervé's stakes are life and death, it's life and death for Danny's career. It's life and death for Danny's soul, you know, if he's not able to face the wreckage he's caused through, mm-hmm. you know, his incredibly destructive alcoholic behavior. And so the story is as much about those things as it is about the specifics of, you know, Hervé and my story. I mean, those are really the backdrop. You know, He I, also was somebody who imprinted on our young brains. I mean, Jamie's too young, but for you and I, we're the same age. Are you saying we're old? Yeah, <laughs> we are old, okay, dude. whatever. You're yeah. saying I'm young? It, yeah, how old is he? Like, he's he's he fucking looks 14. It's fucking relative, It's this dude. cream that he's been using. <laughs> Honestly, it's like this special vegan cream. Let's talk cream about your work hour. Can we talk about your workout routine? Can we, your can we, can we please, yeah. Your latest <laughs> modeling campaign? We're on the fucking control podcast. We're going to some vegan face cream. Oh, Christ. Um... You know, if you're, I think you have to be our age to really grasp 
the impact that that character had on like the psyche of a young 12 year old i mean i don't know what it was like in the uk but in the united states you know when you're when you were a kid and you were our age there's three channels and that's it that's all you get to watch and it was the love boat and fantasy island yeah. and like and emergency charlie's angels, yeah. and charlie's angels and yeah. like that was it and I, I mean what was the viewership on fantasy island oh, it, it was massive like, i mean it was, massive. they did the pilot it was immensely successful i think for the first four seasons that Herbie did the show i think it's roughly 78 to 82 roughly it was by i think 80 81 the number one tv show in the world so in the uk it was the same imprint australia you know everywhere her tattoo was world famous and, you know, what's interesting is the parallel with Peter now, you know. So Peter course, is the yeah. most famous dwarf on the world, on the biggest TV show in the world now. And so there's this meta thing that he's playing the most famous dwarf in the world on the biggest TV show then. Sobriety and these heavy, you know, these really heavy, heavy things. It's also about issues. friendship, about mm -hmm. how out of conflict and sometimes. Mm -hmm. and it's a, but that's right. This movie is about two desperately lonely people who somehow find each other and connect and are able to alleviate their loneliness. And and I, I don't know. That was something I felt at the time, you know. And I knew how lonely Herve was. And I, you know, I was not dissimilar to Danny Tate in in some sense. I was struggling with, you know, coming out of a very bad period of booze and drugs. And I didn't. Were you you weren't that newly sober. Though, no, I wasn't. Time. You were about a year, weren't you? Yeah. That's right. I was about a year. And I, obviously, Danny is thirty Months. days, yeah. month or so. Mm -hmm. And Jamie, what was it for you that attracted you to this project? Just money, really. Yeah, yeah I got paid a fortune. Yeah, yeah, paid You're only promoting like 20 movies right now. No, right? I know. <laughs> it's going to be a big, big <laughs> year for you. It's a busy time. When I heard they're going to pay me more than Pete, I was like, okay, yeah, okay, well, not. I'm inappropriate as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, did Pete get paid? That's very meta paid, with no. the. With no. the we paid him in Sandwich. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny, you, you know, uh, I guess uh, I'm relatively privileged or definitely uh, acutely aware of my privileged position at this time in my career where I have an element of say over what I do a bit of choice which um, uh, I'm sort of very grateful for and, and you read a lot of varied uh, projects a lot of very different scripts and different worlds and I, I love that about this doing this for a living I love the variety of it all and Occasionally when I'm sent something by my team or whatever, my agent will then send a, a, they'll send a sort of main bump of what it's about, like who's directing it, who's producing it, when they plan to shoot, what the budget is, whatever, in one email. And they did that with Hervé. And then I got a follow-up email directly afterwards from my agent saying, uh, put this one at the top of the list, read this first. Which I always know means it's, that it's a sign that she, you know, it's something that she's... Right cares about and you know this has obviously been around for a long time it's had previous incarnations it's nearly been made there's been other actors in in Sasha's mind um for to play Danny and you know so I was made aware of all that by my agent and I read it and I was I just was very caught up in it I find it very emotional um it was mad <laughs> it's just so like, mad. This you know isn't I mean? like it was just the other script. Yeah, you know, it's real. Like, just really wasn't. You know, I just felt that it was something totally. Um, Did you unique? Were you familiar with Fantasy Island? And was uh, that like a wee a bit, a wee bit like uh, where I I come from Belfast in, in Northern Ireland, and, and I guess we had like similar. Do you? We had three channels growing mm -hmm. up, and I, if someone had said to me who's Hervey Villages, I would have I would have recognised that name. I would have known who he was from Man with the Golden Gun, the bomb film he did as well. Like um, uh, Nick Knack, you know, I would have known him from that. Um, we got Love Boat. I remember Love Boat being on at some ungodly hour uh, and uh, watching that a little bit, but um, it wasn't like massively in our sort of social yeah. consciousness growing up, but. Um, you know, did you go back and watch old Fantasy Island reruns? I did. I did see <laughs> yeah. some of it. Yeah, it's it was. <laughs> How did they hold up? Well, for a premise I mean, for a show, it's really kind of. I mean, the pilot <laughs> is one of the most genius things. The pilot was phenomenal. It was really dark and strange and original and unique. And then I think you know by season two or three, That's it is sort of running out of ideas. Yeah, really yeah. it was. Uh, you know, it was not necessarily yeah. the brilliant show that it could have been, but it was for a while. And I think that. Uh, propelled him 
to arrive at such a place. But but of course, and this is the thing with fame, and I know Jamie's experienced a lot of the other side of the curtain, you know, and, and, and for those people I spoke to, I don't know how you feel, Jamie, but it, it, it's quite hollow. 